Incision and Exposure Incision and exposure are performed using the surgeon's preferred technique. The instruments are designed for both standard and minimally invasive approaches. Any hypertrophic synovium is excised along with a portion of the infrapatella fat pad to allow access to the medial, lateral and intercondylar spaces. Prominent osteophytes, particularly medial and lateral osteophytes, are also removed as they can affect soft tissue balancing. Distal femoral resection. The step drill is positioned to enter the intramedullary canal slightly superior and medial to the midline of the trochlea. In this position, the drill should pass easily into the femoral canal and its step feature increases the diameter of the hole. With the padlock symbol on the resection knob aligned with the arrow, the outrigger slide is inserted into the outrigger. The distal femoral cutting block is engaged. The resection knob rotates clockwise to set the desired resection level. A 9mm resection will match the thickness of the implant. The arrow on the outrigger indicates the resection level when using the cutting slot. Each click moves the cutting block 1mm proximal or distal. The desired valgus angle is set on the distal femoral jig by pulling the dial back toward the knob. Note the assembly symbols which are used across the system. The IM rod is assembled into the jig. The IM rod is inserted into the femoral canal to the level of the isthmus. Slide the jig down the rod toward the femur until the distal plate contacts the distal femur. The cutting block rotates until it rests on the anterior femur. It is secured to the femur with two pins through the centerline holes. An optional third pin can be used. Remove the jig from the cutting block using the red cutting block clip. Resect the distal femur. Pins can be removed using the pin jack. Tibial alignment and resection. The tibial ankle clamp is attached to the distal uprod. Then the distal uprod attaches to the proximal uprod with the height adjustment knob fully unscrewed. And the appropriate cutting block is selected and attached to the proximal uprod. The desired tibial posterior slope is set prior to attaching to the leg using the two pinch levers on the slope adjustment. With the knee in 90 degrees of flexion, the ankle clamp is placed around the malleoli. Varus valgus is initially set by aligning the proximal central marking on the cutting block with the medial one-third of the tibial tubercle. The distal uprod is positioned parallel with the axis of the tibia using the ratchet at the ankle. Positioning can be checked by running two fingers between the uprod and the anterior face of the tibia. The varus valgus adjustment mechanism aligns the proximal uprod parallel to the long axis of the tibia. For many patients, this involves translating the adjustment mechanism until the second line from the lateral side of the ankle clamp lines up with the indicator line. The adjustable tibial stylus is attached to the cutting block through the slot feature. The knob sets the resection level on the stylus. The composite thickness of the thinnest insert and tibial tray is 9 mm. With the pointer of the stylus positioned in the desired location, the height adjustment knob is locked. Once the position of the tibial cutting block has been selected, the block is pinned through the centerline holes. The tibia is resected. Extension gap assessment and balancing. The spacer block is designed to accommodate both cruciate retaining and posterior stabilized techniques. To evaluate the PS extension flexion and CR extension gaps, attach the spacer base to the spacer block. Each end can be connected to a different shim to allow sequential evaluation of thicknesses. With the leg fully extended, the spacer block is introduced between the two resected surfaces. It should fit snugly. The extension gap should be rectangular with the leg in full extension. 
If the extension gap is not balanced, the angle of either the tibial or the femoral cut may be adjusted or soft tissue release is performed to achieve balance. A gentle varus valgus stress test may be performed with the spacer block in place. Typically, 1 mm to 3 mm of opening both medially and laterally is desirable. Measured or balanced sizes are available depending on surgeon preference. Both options are designed to work with the femoral finishing guide. Measured femoral sizing and rotation. The AP axis, white sides line and or the epicondylar axis is marked on the resected distal femur. The measured sizing and rotation guide is placed against the resected surface of the distal femur with the posterior feet of the guide contacting the posterior condyles. The guide may be provisionally secured with a pin through the fixation hole. The degree of external rotation is adjusted to be parallel to the epicondylar axis and perpendicular to Whiteside's line by squeezing the rotation lever and rotating the anterior section while holding the feet of the device against the posterior condyles. The stylus is positioned so the tip just contacts the desired point on the anterior femur. The position of the stylus will then be located near the exit point of the saw blade. Adjustment of the superior inferior position of the scale indicates the proper femoral size. The line through the center of the anterior down pinholes indicates the size of the femur. The size position is locked by twisting the locking knob. Either the anterior down pinholes or posterior up pinholes will provide a fixed reference point for bone cuts. The pins are placed. Remove the provisional threaded headed pin if utilized and release the knob by rotating counterclockwise. The stylus is loosened then pushed forward on the anterior face of the femur so that it is no longer contacting the bone surface. The sizer is pulled off the femur and the two components removed together, leaving the pins in the distal femur. Balanced femoral sizing and rotation. The balanced sizer sizes the femur sets rotation of the femur based on ligament tension and enables assessment of the flexion gap in comparison to the previously determined extension gap. To accommodate differences in flexion gap assessment between the cruciate retaining and posterior stabilized implants, the appropriate foot is attached to the balanced sizing rotation guide. After the extension gap is determined and recorded, the IM rod is inserted into the intramedullary canal and the tapered plug secured tightly. With the knee flexed at 90 degrees, the balanced sizer slides onto the IM rod with the feet clearing the posterior condyles. The tensioning knob is turned counterclockwise in the direction of the size arrow until the sizer foot contacts the condyles and the sizer is unable to rotate on the rod. The guide and stylus slide over the main body of the sizer until the stylus touches the anterior femur. The guide is firmly placed against the distal femoral cut. The position of the stylus indicates the exit point of the saw blade. The superior inferior position of the stylus is adjusted to match the approximate femoral size. Then read the femoral size on the outer scale of the guide indicated by the size line on the main body of the sizer. With the femoral size and the extension gap determined, the sizer may now be used to assess the flexion gap in comparison to the previously determined extension gap and to set femoral rotation. The tensioning knob is turned clockwise in the direction of the millimeter arrow until the previously determined size on the outer scale matches the millimeter thickness on the inner scale, which matches the previously determined extension gap. With the tibia held firmly, a varus valgus stress is applied and the liftoff observed between the sizer foot and the tibial cut. If further tension is required, the knob is turned clockwise until the next thickness of insert is reached and a further assessment of the ligaments made. Lock the assembly in place by rotating the locking knob clockwise. Insert universal pins into the pinholes on each side of the sizing scale. The sizer is removed by unlocking and releasing the tension. The IM rod is removed with the tapered plug. Femoral preparation. The 4-in-1 cutting block that matches the selected femur size is placed over the two pins through the center line holes. The patented pin locating slots aid in placement. 
Attune knee system femoral components increase in size by 3 mm in the AP direction. This allows the surgeon to consistently upsize or downsize the femoral component. The 4-in-1 cutting blocks also allow the surgeon to adjust the AP position of the femoral component by 1.5 mm in either direction. This creates the intraoperative flexibility to position the femoral component based on the surgeon's assessment of the flexion gap and the desired posterior condylar offset. Cutouts indicate the medial lateral width of the narrow component. The flexion space can be checked by placing a spacer block below the chamfer block. For a CR procedure, the CR flexion spacer base should be attached to the spacer block. The angel wing confirms the location of the cut and degree of rotation. Pins are inserted into the divergent pinholes on the medial and lateral aspects of the block. The removable posterior saw capture is placed onto the 4-in-1 cutting block. With retractors protecting the collateral ligaments and popliteal tendon, the anterior and posterior femur are resected. The pins are removed to cut the anterior and posterior chamfers. The block is removed. Posterior condyle preparation. For a CR procedure, the femoral finishing guide that corresponds to the femoral size is positioned. Any excess bone or residual osteophytes in the posterior recesses are removed using a curved osteotome or gouge. The sulcus cut is performed using the sulcus cut ramp. The femoral finishing guide is removed. Tibial preparation. Once the tibial base trial is positioned for coverage and tibial rotation, the drill tower is attached with the spikes on its underside engaging with the two holes on the anterior aspect of the base trial. These spikes provide fixation for both the drill tower and base trial. The tibia is reamed to where the size mark on the side of the drill aligns to the top surface of the tower. The correct size keel punch is attached to the impaction handle and inserted into the drill tower. The assembly is impacted into the cancellous bone until the keel punch is seated flush on the base trial. When the punch is fully seated, the impaction handle will automatically disengage, allowing the handle and drill tower to be removed together. Trial reduction. The femoral trial is positioned on the femur. The femoral impactor can be used to fully seat the trial. If the trial does not fit, the cuts should be revisited. The tibial articulation surface trial is selected to match the femoral size and style of implant along with the corresponding shim. The articulation surface trial and shim are securely engaged and the assembly attached into the base trial. With the trial prosthesis in place, the knee is extended carefully, noting the anteroposterior and medial lateral stability and the overall alignment. Any instability can be corrected using the next thicker shim. The femoral lug holes are drilled using the patella femoral drill. Patella resection and preparation. The height gauge on the patella resection guide sets resection depth to 9.5 mm and can be rotated to find the highest point on the patella. Using the caliper, the thickness of the patella is estimated and the level of bone resection evaluated. With the leg in extension, the medial border of the patella can be initially located with the large central spike. The guide is positioned so the height gauge is against the articular surface of the patella. With the medial lateral position and the height defined, the clamp is partially engaged by the second large central spike, which allows for rotation of the patella until the inferior and superior orientation is achieved and is then clamped fully. Resection is performed through the saw capture. Accurate alignment of the drill trial is important for proper patella placement and tracking. The patella drill trial may be placed using either the trial handle or the modular patella clamp. The drill trial is inserted onto the trial handle until it clicks into place. One larger central spike allows initial engagement so that the trial can be rotated to its optimal position before being fully seated. 
It is positioned on the resected patella to assess bone coverage. The size of drill trial is selected for maximum patella bone coverage. Medial lateral location of the patella implant apex is verified relative to the native anatomy ridge. The trial handle may be used to aid in determining optimal position. When properly aligned, the handle should be perpendicular to the long axis of the leg and parallel to the prosthetic joint line. If the modular patella clamp is used, the drill trial is assembled onto the clamp. The trial is pressed onto the bone, engaging the spikes. With the drill through trial secured in place, the holes are drilled using the lug drill. The sclerotic bone is prepared to ensure a continuous cement mantle with good cement interdigitation of 2 to 4 mm. With a layer of cement on the bone and the implant, the tibial base is carefully inserted, avoiding malrotation. All extruded cement is removed. The femoral component is positioned on the introducer by rotating the red central thumb wheel to move the grip arms outward. The femoral component is pushed against the impaction shoes and the thumb wheel rotated to move the grip arms inward and engage in the slots on the femoral component. The side knob is locked to secure the implant. With a layer of cement on the bone and the implant, the femoral component is inserted, engaging the femoral lugs in the lug holes of the distal femur. The femoral introducer is released. A combination of condylar and notch impaction is used to seat the femoral component. All extruded cement is removed. Tibial insert implantation. A trial reduction may be performed using insert trials. Then the final tibial insert can be impacted into place on the base using the fixed bearing insert impactor. For the final patella preparation, the clamp ring is connected to the modular clamp. With cement applied to the implant and the surface of the patella, the component is positioned with the clamp ring centered over the articular surface and the metal backing plate against the anterior cortex of the patella. The patella clamp holds the implant until polymerization is complete. The knee is closed using the surgeon's preferred technique.